What's up YouTube, it is your boy JB and we are here today with a review for Growing Up Hip Hop. This is season six, I believe this is episode three, you guys. The episode was titled, Hub Backyard is Not Clean. Oh, we gonna get into this episode, y'all, because this episode actually pissed me off and it was the end of the episode that pissed me off the most. <clears throat> it be your own family sometime that'll just, that'll just screw you over. But before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, what are we doing here, you guys? Why are we going out on a date? And at the end of it, you leave me with the bill. Hit that subscribe button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and also hit that notification bell button so that notifies you also. All right, you guys, so. It is almost 9.30, okay. All right, you guys, so with that being said, let's go ahead and just jump to this episode review. I got a lot to say and more specifically about one set person she nope it was three people that I got a lot to say about three people that I I, I I gotta get into but let's go ahead and jump into the review shall All right, we? you guys first let's talk about Angela real quick so with Angela you guys know Angela is out there in Miami with Daniel so Jojo is there and Jojo was trying to figure out what prompted Angela to move to Miami so Angela said that, you know what, I've, I've wanted to move, to, you, you know, I've always wanted to move to uh, Miami. And JoJo was like, no, you have not always wanted to move to Miami. When has that become a thing? Because, you know, when I was telling you, me and Denise wanted to move out here to Miami, you said, don't do it. So what's changed? What's changed is that, that dude, Daniel. I mean, God, when you look at Daniel, he really does look like when Martin got his ass beat on that episode like he really looked like knotted up martin and then on top of that daniel got some big ass ears like his ears are really big he looks like you know <laughs> it's an episode of family guy i believe it's family guy it was a cartoon version of president obama and he flew into the scene using his ears that's what daniel looks like also his, i mean his ears are so huge but i am happy to, i am happy that angela says she kept her place in New York and I know she says something about LA. I'm glad you kept your place. Can somebody actually let me know, are Daniel and Angela even still together at this point? That's the question that I have. Are they still together? So Jojo tells Angela that you know he wants to plan an anniversary party for him and Denise, you know, to celebrate their one year wedding anniversary. You know, they and then you know they've also dealt with their miscarriage. So they're gonna meet up with Cree, who is Uncle Luke's daughter. And let's see. Actually, let's go ahead and just knock them out the way real quick. Once again, like I said, Daniel's ears, big as hell. So with Angela, I just really feel that Angela is moving way too fast when it comes down to this whole situation with Daniel. And once again, like I said, are Daniel and Angela even still in a relationship at this point? I haven't looked, so I don't know. So Angela face, was FaceTiming with Daniel. Angela was talking about, you know, how JoJo wanted to go to the, the boxing match. But he's telling her that one of his team members tested positive for COVID and that he has to stay inside the bubble, which I can't say that he's lying about that because, I mean, we all know that with the NBA, the NBA had a, a bubble and the players were in the bubble for, you know, they were in the bubble until the end of the season. So we do know that that could be true and it could be a way of him saying, hey, I don't want you here. Let me tell her a lie. Tell her one of my, you know, tell her my, my boxing partner came down with COVID. Boom. Angela can't come. It could be, he could be lying. could be telling the truth. So Angela tells her, I, I just, when, like I said, when it comes down to Angela, I just really feel that Angela is just moving too fast, too soon with this guy. I, I just don't. It's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's Angela's life, by all means. It's her life, but I just think that she's moving too fast. Do y'all get where I'm coming from? Like, let me know in the comment section. Do y'all understand where I'm coming from? I just really feel like Angela's moving way too fast with this man. But, once again, and the thing for me with Angela is it's her son. That's really what it comes down to. Like, you're have you introduced, I know, she, well, actually, she has introduced him to her son. I always look at people, men and women, like... If you introduce people to your kids too soon before you know if the relationship is going to work out, like give it at least a good six months and then introduce your kids to the person. That's how I feel. But whatever. Whatever. 
whatever. Let me let me know in the comment section, like I said, you guys. Let me know in the comment section if Angela is still with that guy. I don't know. So then we do see Angela and JoJo. So they met up with Cree, who is the daughter of Uncle Luke. And like I said, they're planning this anniversary party for Denise and JoJo. So um, Cree, I guess, is an event planner. So she, they're going to plan it. And JoJo asked her, do you think Uncle Luke can perform? She says, I don't know, because my dad and I, we're not in a good space right now. And then they just tell her, she's like, and she doesn't know if her dad wants to mend that relationship. And I like what Angela and JoJo both said. If you want to, to mend a relationship, have a conversation with him. You know, be in the space with him. Tell him, hey, let's have a proper conversation. Let's talk about it. And if you want to move forward, move forward. If you don't, then it is what it is, unfortunately. But that is it for Angela, JoJo, and Cree. Let's move All on. Right, you guys. Next, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate Twist and Brianna because they had one scene together. I'm going to incorporate them with Boogie. Not Boogie. I'm going to incorporate them with Savannah, Stevie Jr., and Stevie J. It's so interesting that Stevie J is on this show. He's went from love and hip-hop to this show. Hey, it is what it is. Maybe he's happier. Maybe he's happier. Was Stevie J on the last season? Nope, he was not. He was not on season nine of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. But Mimi was. And I know they're currently filming because I think last week that the cast was in Dubai. Okay. But um, yeah. So let's talk about Brianna and Twist. So Brianna and Twist, they are out and they are doing a picnic. And they did something that is very country it's something that we do here in texas i don't do it because i don't eat pickles i'm not a pickle guy i don't like pickles but my cousins do it all the time my cousins eat pickles with kool-aid actually sometimes you can like mix like they i have cousins who do what they did have the kool-aid just the powder and dip the um pickle in it i have cousins who do that and then i also have cousins who will put the kool-aid in the um in the pickle jar and let it soak up in that way so it'll turn the whole entire pickle whatever color the um it'll turn the pickle whatever color the uh the, the lemon the kool-aid is so if you have a strawberry cherry whatever it'll turn it that color but my, i think most people like you i know it's always a red flavor so it's either strawberry or cherry i think it's cherry i think that's the go-to is cherry but I know people who do both, who do both, like I said. Um, so they are talking. So Brianna is talking about Boogie. And Brianna's talking about the fact that she has some issues with Boogie. So the reason that Brianna has issues with Boogie is because Boogie has sat down with, at a nail shop, he sat with um, Egypt and Sam. And Egypt and Sam were bashing her. And Boogie didn't step in to defend her. And I'm going to give Brianna credit. I'm going to give her that. I do see where I do get her point. Like it's one thing, it's one thing to be cool with people that I'm not cool with, but it's another thing to be cool with them, be in the presence of them, and then they badmouth me and bash me, and you don't say, "Yo, that's my that's my fam, that's my friend." Like I love you and I love her, and I don't want you to talk about her in in front of me, like. Yeah, Boogie definitely should have nipped that in the bud. So I'm, I, I get I get Brianna's point from that. So then Twist tells Brianna that, you know, he met up with um, Sandy. And he told her about Sam and that damn. Now, I watched other people's reviews last week. And I, I mean, oh, shit, that pulled my hair. Like, I get it. It shouldn't it shouldn't bother Twist what Sam does. It really shouldn't. But I mean, he is. A, I mean, it's Sam. Who likes Sam? So I, I I guess that's why I gave a pass. And I don't, like I said last week, I don't think Twist is homophobic. But I do I, I do get where other people are coming from. Like, why is Twist so concerned about what Sam does on social media? You can block him. You can mute him. You can do whatever you want to do. But I mean, once again, it's Sam. Who really cares about Sam? Let's move on, you guys. So Stevie J and Stevie Jr., they are out on the basketball court. So Stevie Jr. tells Stevie J that he found out where Savannah lives and he found out that the rent at her apartment is $6,000 a month. I'm like, God damn, $6,000 a month for an apartment? Oh, that's a lot of money. Six G's. 
I wonder how big the apartment is. And from and when they went to the apartment, the apartment looked really small. And Stevie Jr. asked Stevie J, had he been to her apartment? He says no. Ooh, excuse me, I didn't mean to burp. So the next thing we see, they go to her apartment, and like I said, six thousand dollars for that apartment. It's really, it looked really, really small. I mean, it looked like her kitchen and her living room were connected. Her kitchen, her dining room, and her living room, those were connected. And then she did, I mean, she has a bedroom, but I mean, the fact that your kitchen, your living room, and your dining room are right there with one another, you got a small ass apartment. And you paying $6,000 for it. So the running thing for them is they're trying to figure out what she does to get her money. She says she manifests, and then, you know, her palms will itch, and I guess money will appear. Okay, Savannah, what are you doing? Are you doing OnlyFans? Um, and you know, OnlyFans has a bad stick. OnlyFans has a bad stigma. I was actually on Instagram today, or was it Facebook? I think it might have been my. Nope, it was Instagram, where they posted a post about joint joint OnlyFans, and it was for people who work out. Like you can do whatever you want on Instagram. I mean, OnlyFans. People just have the stigma that it's porn. People just think automatically think porn because that's what most people use it for is porn, but it's not. You can use it. I mean, OnlyFans is similar to Patreon. But like I said, I don't know if Patreon would allow you to do porn, whereas OnlyFans and just for fans and stuff like that and Connect Pal and all of them, they will allow you to do porn. But she does something. I don't know what she does, but she does something to get her money. Hope, she says it's legal, so it is what it is. But $6,000 a month, that is a lot of fucking money. Let's see if I got everything. Yeah, they were talking about the fact that she doesn't have a job. All right, you guys, let's move on and wrap this episode up. Now, the next stuff I'm about to talk about is the stuff that really pissed me off. But let's move All right, you guys, let's talk about Egypt, Sam, Sandy, Tyran, and Titi and the family. So we see Egypt and Sam. Egypt is in the booth and she's recording a song, her new single. It it sounded okay. I'm not I'm not gonna hate on it. The song sounded okay. The the thing that just bothers me is Sam. Sam is in the studio and he just bopping and you know he know the words to the song, which I'm a, I'm not gonna hate on that. There's nothing wrong with that. The thing for me when it comes to Sam is Sam just gives very much. I mean, Sam is an opportunist. He even said that people are always talking about he's an opportunist. Well, I mean, if the shoe fits Sam, wear that motherfucker. You're an opportunist. So then Savannah comes down to the studio and, and Sam takes Boogie for Boogie to come down to the studio. And, you know, they talk about how, you know, Egypt and Sam are a team. Y'all not a team. It's just Sam. It's just Sam. Sam wants to have, an like when Savannah was talking about her, is this an EP, is this an album? Egypt didn't get to say nothing because Sam chimed in talking about the name of the album is Good Girl Gone, Good Girl Gone Wild or something like that. I was like, but she was talking to Egypt. She was talking to Egypt, not you. So I guess you Egypt's mouthpiece, okay. Like I say, Sam is just, ugh. I just can't with Sam. I really can't. So Boogie comes down to the studio. Boogie tells them that he's moved into his new spot in Vegas. And Sam suggests that Boogie, Bonner, him, Egypt go on a double date. Absolutely not. I wouldn't go to the end of the world with Sam. Sam couldn't take me to the desert. Sam couldn't take me to the bathroom. Sam, if I was a woman, Sam can take me to get a pap smear. Sam can take me anywhere. Drunk, high, sober, whatever. Sam could not take me any place but home. Nope. He couldn't take me again. Nope, nope, nope. He couldn't take me nowhere. He could not take me anywhere. I don't trust Sam. So then we see TT. So TT and Sean, they're meeting with Tyran. And this is Tyran's first time actually meeting. Did I get ahead of myself? Nah. So this is their first time meeting up and it's his first time seeing the baby. 
So T Tyran is telling T T that you know he's opened up his school and he's having a little bit of an opening. She was like, so it, it, he said it's gonna be a small little thing, so not many people are gonna be there. But see, in his interview, he's telling us that he wants this to be the first time that Sandy and TT meet up with each other. I'm like, that is not gonna be a good idea. That's an ambush, buddy. I don't like when people do that. Like that is the one thing that I would always ask people. Don't ambush me. Like don't have me meeting with somebody that you know I'm not in a good space with. Forewarn me. Because if I come there and they on some bullshit, I'm not, I'm liable. I don't get mad at the reaction that I give you. Like if I come somewhere and you be like, oh, there is someone that you haven't spoke to in months or years. And I'm be like, really? This what we doing? Okay. And then they get to run in their mouth. I'm like, hey, you know me. I'm not the type of person that you can run your mouth with. I'm, I, don't do the, I don't do the talking. We don't do that. We don't do that. I don't do that. I don't play that. Because if you get to talking and you say some stuff that I don't like and, and I have a reckless mouth, Sometimes I will either leave, I will either leave so I don't say something that, well, I don't regret anything that I say. I'm going to leave so I don't say something that you will get offended by. Or number two, I don't put my hands on you. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. The good Lord, he's working on me and my temper because I, 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 I will have a short fuse and I snap in a heartbeat. So I'm like, that's not going to be a good idea. And then your ignorant ass mama. Okay. I just don't understand Sandy. When it comes to Sandy, I really don't understand that idiot. She is a complete fucking idiot. Don't understand her, period, point blank. So, TT, she went to go see Tyran at his school, and she's there for a few minutes, and then who shows up? Sandy. Now, let's talk about that little, that little blurb that they showed in the middle of the, at the 40-minute mark of the episode. So, Sandy met up with her sister, Don, while she was in New York. And they were talking about TT. And she was talking about the fact that, no, that was at the dinner. That was when she met up with, um, that happened when she, because I about to say something that, that didn't happen. But they were talking about TT when they were at the pool, when they were playing pool. And that's when the name of the, that's when the episode title came up, when she said her backyard is not clean. So I was like, okay, are they gonna leave it at that? Like, are they not gonna mention what she's alluding to, I wish they had. I honestly wish they had because it was disgusting to me. Like y'all, y'all are family, and y'all doing this damn, y'all doing this shit. I mean, they all. I mean, blood. they say blood ain't thicker than water, but family is not always by you know who people who you are are blood related to. Family can be the people that are family to me. Are the people are there that are by your side no matter what good bad and different like I don't think fam family is a lot more than just us being blood related it's a lot more to family than that and these ladies are not showing you would really think that TT is just some random chick off the street the way that they're talking about her but we're gonna get to it we definitely gonna get to it so, like I said, Sandy shows up, and then somehow they started talking. Well, actually, she asked how T.T.'s baby was, and T.T. told her he's good. So then they were trying to figure out where they are, what they are to the baby. So, because then earlier in the episode, T.T. said to the baby that that's Uncle Tyran. So, Tyran, she says, I, you know, I, I call him Uncle Tyran. She says, so <laughs> what am I? She said, you're the lady that he's yet to meet, <laughs> which is the truth. And she got offended by that. She was, her face was like, but I'm like, she's telling you the truth. You are, yes, you are biologically his aunt. We all know that. She knows that. But at this point, you are literally a woman that he has not met, period. So don't get in your feelings. Don't get in your feelings, Sandy. Now, let's move over to the scene. And like I said, this ep the end of the episode really pissed me off so badly, like, when it comes to reality TV, I know you do things for a storyline, but I would never do stuff like this. Like when it comes to my close friends or my family, I just would never go on a reality show and air out their dirty laundry or what I perceive is there or what I think 
might be their dirty laundry. I mean, even in families, family members gossip and sometimes it's not always truthful what they're saying. So y'all are going around spreading the shit that y'all don't know is true. Now these wigs that I was looking at, Sandy's wigs, Don's wig, and Egypt's wig, hotmess.com. So Egypt is telling her about her and Sam, I don't give a shit. Keeping it real with you, don't care. If she likes it, if she and Sandy like it, I love it. I really don't. But if they, we just gonna play like I do. So then they start talking about TT. So Sandy somehow brought it up that she thinks that, she, you know, she's heard it. She doesn't know if it's true or not that, you know, TT wants to get married in Jamaica. And Egypt was like, Jamaica? Well, you know, she know that I, I that's my dream place to get married. And she just, and so Egypt is just playing this whole woe is me card. TT is doing this to get back at me. TT is doing this to spite me. TT is doing this. Everything that TT is doing with this wedding is about Egypt is what she's basically trying to say that TT is doing this because of Egypt. Egypt, you're not that important. Let's just keep it real. No one cares that much about you or Sam. I got to keep it real. So then the messy aunt, actually before that, um, before that, Sandy told them that when she went to Tyran school that, you know, TT said that the baby She's, she's a lady that the baby has yet to meet. And Don is like, that was so rude of her to say. Well, I mean, if the truth hurts, deal with it. Again, like I said, we know biologically you're his aunt. But that baby ain't met you. That baby, if, if, if somebody would have put that baby in front of you and say, crawl to her, he gonna look at her like, he gonna, like, he gonna look at you like, who is this woman? I've never saw her day in my life. Henceforth, woman, he ain't met yet. The fuck? So then this Don, then they, the, the sister Don goes one step further and talking about Titi's backyard is not clean. And then she goes on to say that Sean has been cheating on Titi. I'm like, oh my God. Again, like I said, I just, I, it, it pissed me off because <clears throat> that is your niece. Now I get it. No, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it, period, point blank. If me and my family have a falling out, <clears throat> even if we're on a reality TV show, I'm not. Like if somebody was, so if I was in an interview with my producer and they're like, so, did you hear about so-and-so? I'm like, nope, never heard about it. Like if one of my cousins was cheating, they'd be like, did you know that your cousin was alleged to be cheating on someone, on, on um, their partner? Nope. I didn't know nothing about that. Who told you? Oh, your aunt so-and-so told me. Really? News to me. Like, I'm gonna play dumb. And then if they say, and, and then they get us in a scene together, I need you to bring that up. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I'm not selling my family. I don't care how much y'all paying me. That's my family. Like. Even once, even if this show, you know, like, let's just say we're not on the show next season. I still got to deal with that shit. Like if I bring it up here now and it's a big, huge fallout, I still got to live with the, I still got to, these are my, this is my family. This is not just a job. That's my family. I got to deal with them. No, not happening. Girl, y'all are really selling yourselves for a reality show. <clears throat> As much as um, Master P and um, Romeo got on my nerves last season, I'm starting to see what they were talking about just a little bit. Starting to see it. Like, I just could never sell my family out like that. Seriously. But, you guys, that's the episode. I didn't want to go on too long with that because I could continue to go, but I'm not. But let me know what you guys think about that. Let me know what you guys think about this episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop new ghosts and share this video. Until the next one, you guys stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and socially distance. And if you're not going to wear a mask, just be safe, you guys, and be blessed. Until the next one, you guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the week's hottest topics and ready to love. Until then, you guys, have a good night and be safe. Bye, guys. All right, you guys, let's talk about Egypt, Sam, Sandy, Tyran, and TT and the family. So we see Egypt and Sam. Egypt is in the booth and she's recording a song, her new single. 
it it sounded okay. I'm not I'm not gonna hate on it. The song sounded okay. The the thing that just bothers me is Sam. Sam is in the studio and he just bopping and you know he know the words to the song, which I'm a, I'm not gonna hate on that. There's nothing wrong with that. The thing for me when it comes to Sam is Sam just gives very much. I mean, Sam is an opportunist. He even said it that people are always talking about he's an opportunist. Well, I mean, if the shoe fits Sam, wear that motherfucker. You're an opportunist. So then Savannah comes down to the studio and and Sam takes Boogie for Boogie to come down to the studio. And, you know, they talk about how, you know, Egypt and Sam are a team. Y'all not a team. It's just Sam. It's just Sam. Sam wants to have an imp like when Savannah was talking about her, is this an EP? Is this an album? Egypt didn't get to say nothing because Sam chimed in talking about the name of the album is Good Girl Gone, Good Girl Gone Wild or something like that. I was like, but she was talking to Egypt. She was talking to Egypt, not you. So I guess you Egypt's mouthpiece. Okay. Like I say, Sam is just, ugh. I just can't with Sam. I really can't. So Boogie comes down to the studio. Boogie tells them that he's moving into his new spot in Vegas. And Sam suggests that Boogie, Bana, him, Egypt go on a double date. Absolutely not. I wouldn't go to the end of the world with Sam. Sam couldn't take me to the desert. Sam couldn't take me to the bathroom. Sam, if I was a woman, Sam couldn't take me to get a pap smear. Sam couldn't take me anywhere. Drunk, high, sober, whatever. Sam could not take me any place but home. Nope. He couldn't take me again. Nope, nope, nope. He couldn't take me nowhere. He could not take me anywhere. I don't trust Sam. So then we see TT. So TT and Sean, they're meeting with Tyran. And this is Tyran's first time actually meeting. Did I get ahead of myself? Nah. So this is their first time meeting up and it's his first time seeing the baby. So T Tyran is telling TT that, you know, he's opened up his school and he's having a little bit of an opening. She was like, so he said it's going to be a small little thing. So not many people are going to be there. But see, in his interview, he's telling us that he wants this to be the first time that Sandy and TT meet up with each other. I'm like, that is not going to be a good idea. That's an ambush, buddy. I don't like when people do that. Like, that is the one thing that I would always ask people. Don't ambush me. Like, don't have me meet with somebody that you know I'm not in a good space with. Forewarn me. Because if I come there and they on some bullshit, I'm not, I'm liable. I don't get mad at the reaction that I give you. Like, if I come somewhere and you be like, oh, there is someone that you haven't spoke to in months or years. And I'm be like, Really? This what we doing? Oh, okay. And then they get to run in their mouth. I'm like, hey, you know me. I'm not the type of person that you can run your mouth with. I'm, I don't do the I don't do the talking. We don't do that. We don't do that. I don't do that. I don't play that. Because if you get to talking, you say some stuff that I don't like, and and I have a reckless mouth. Sometimes I will either leave. I will even leave so I don't say something that. Well, I don't regret anything that I say. I'm going to leave so I don't say something that you will get offended by. Or number two, I don't put my hands on you. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. The good Lord, he's working on me and my temper. Because I, 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 I will have a short fuse and I snap in a heartbeat. So I'm like, that's not going to be a good idea. And then your ignorant ass mama. Okay. I just don't understand, Sandy. When it comes to Sandy, I really don't understand that idiot. She is a complete fucking idiot. Don't understand her, period, point blank. So, Titi, she went to go see Tyran at his school, and she's there for a few minutes, and then who shows up? Sandy. Now, let's talk about that little, that little blurb that they showed in the middle of the, at the 40-minute mark of the episode. So, Sandy met up with her sister, Don, while she was in New York, and they were talking about Titi. And she was talking about the fact that, you no, know, that was at the dinner. That was when she met up with, um, that happened when she, because I about to say something that, I, that didn't happen. But they were talking about TT when they were at the pool, when they were playing pool. And that's when the name of the, that's when the episode title came up, 
when she said her backyard is not clean. So I was like, okay, are they going to leave it at that? Like, are they not going to mention what she's alluding to? I wish they had. I honestly wish they had because it was disgusting to me. Like y'all are, y'all are family and y'all doing this damn, y'all, y'all doing this shit. I mean, they all, I mean, blood. They say blood ain't thicker than water, but family is not always by, you know, who, people who you are, are blood related to. Family can be the people that are, family to me are the people are there that are by your side, no matter what, good, bad, and different. Like, I don't think fam, family is a lot more than just us being blood related. It's a lot more to family than that. And these ladies are not showing you would really think that TT is just some random chick off the street the way that they're talking about her. But we're going to get to it. we definitely going to get to it. So, like I said, Sandy shows up and then somehow they started talking. Well, actually, she asked how TT's baby was and TT told her he's good. So then they were trying to figure out where they are, what they are to the baby. So, because then earlier in the episode, TT said to the baby that that's Uncle Tyran. So Tyran, she says, I, you know, I, I call him Uncle Tyran. She says, so <laughs> what am I? She said, you're the lady that he's yet to meet, <laughs> which is the truth. And she got offended by that. She was, her face was like, but I'm like, she's telling you the truth. You are, yes, you are biologically his aunt. We all know that. She knows that. But at this point, you are literally a woman that he has not met, period. So don't get in your feelings. Don't get in your feelings, Sandy. Now, let's move over to the scene. And like I said, this ep- the end of the episode really pissed me off so badly. Like, when it comes to reality TV, I know you do things for a storyline. But I would never do stuff like this. Like, when it comes to my close friends or my family, I just would never go on a reality show and air out their dirty laundry or what I perceive is there or what I think might be their dirty laundry. I mean, even in families, family members gossip and sometimes it's not always truthful what they're saying. So y'all are going around spreading shit that y'all don't know is true. Now these wigs that I was looking at, Sandy's wigs, Don's wig, and Egypt's wig, hotmess.com. So Egypt is telling her about her and Sam, I don't give a shit. Keeping it real with you, don't care. If she likes it, if she and Sandy like it, I love it. I really don't. But if they, we just gonna play like I do. So then they start talking about TT. So Sandy somehow brought it up that she thinks that, she, you know, she's heard it. She doesn't know if it's true or not that, you know, TT wants to get married in Jamaica. And Egypt was like, Jamaica? Well, you know, she know that I, I that's my dream place to get married. And she just, and so Egypt is just playing this whole woe is me card. TT is doing this to get back at me. TT is doing this to spite me. TT is doing this. Everything that TT is doing with this wedding is about Egypt, is what she's basically trying to say. That TT is doing this because of Egypt. Egypt, you're not that important. Let's just keep it real. No one cares that much about you or Sam. I got to keep it real. So then the messy aunt, actually, before that, um, before that, Sandy told them that when she went to Tyran's school that, you know, T.T. said that the baby, she's, she's a lady that the baby has yet to meet. And Don is like, that was so rude of her to say. Well, I mean, if the truth hurts, deal with it. Again, like I said, we know biologically you're his aunt. But that baby ain't met you. That baby, if, if, if somebody would have put that baby in front of you and say, crawl to her, he gonna look at her like, he gonna, like, he gonna look at you like, who is this woman? I've never saw her day in my life. Henceforth, woman, he ain't met yet. The fuck? So then this Don, then they, the, the sister Don goes one step further and talking about Titi's backyard is not clean. And then she goes on to say that Sean has been cheating on TT. I'm like, oh my God. Again, like I said, I just, I, it, it pissed me off because <clears throat> that is your niece. Now I get it. No, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. 
I, I, I don't get it, period, point blank. If me and my family have a falling out, <clears throat> even if we're on a reality TV show, I'm not, like if somebody was, so if I was in an interview with my producer and they were like, so, did you hear about so-and-so? I'm like, nope, never heard about it. Like if one of my cousins was cheating, they'd be like, did you know that your cousin was alleged to be cheating on someone, on, on um, their partner? Nope. I didn't know nothing about that. Who told you? Oh, your aunt so-and-so told me. Really? News to me. Like, I'm going to play dumb. And then if they say, and then they get us in a scene together, I need you to bring that up. No. I'm not... <laughs> I'd be like, no, I'm not selling my family. I don't care how much y'all paying me. That's my family. Like, even once, even if this show, you know, like, let's just say we're not on the show next season. I still got to deal with that shit. Like, if I bring it up here now and it's a big, huge fallout, I still got to live with the, I still got to, these are my, this is my family. This is not just a job. That's my family. I got to deal with them. No, not happening. Y'all are really selling yourselves for a reality show. <clears throat> as much as um, Master P and um, Romeo got on my nerves last season, I'm starting to see what they were talking about just a little bit. Starting to see it. Like, I just could never sell my family out like that. Seriously. But, you guys, that's the episode. I didn't want to go on too long with that because I could continue to go, but I'm not. But let me know what you guys think about that. Let me know what you guys think about this episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop the goes and share this video. Until the next one, you guys stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and socially distance. And if you're not going to wear a mask, just be safe, you guys, and be blessed. Until the next one, you guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the week's hottest topics and ready to love. Until then, you guys, have a good night and be safe. Bye, guys.